everybody. Welcome. I am Shannon Pruitt. I'm the Global Chief Content and Partnerships Officer for Stagwell. Um, I am also a longtime brand storytelling advisor on the board, so I am thrilled to be here with this esteemed group, uh, many of you whom you may know, but some of whom you may not. Um, I, as part of this, we're here today to talk about um, HP and their initiative called Generation Impact and this particular film, which is called The Scientist, and I would never be able to do it justice. So I'm actually gonna ask the group here to, in a round robin, which I will assign so that everyone knows which <laughs> direction we're going. Um, I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves a little bit about you know, who, who are they, what was their role in this project. And then I'm gonna circle back to Angela right out of the gate. And we're gonna talk a little bit about um, the origin of this um, and, and where we are now. And this is obviously the third installment, I believe. So, you know, how did this come about? So let's go around first. And, and Angela, why don't you start us? And then we'll go to Sunshine, Marcus, Zeta, and Stephanie, just because that's the order you are on my screen. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Shannon. Um, I'm Angela Matusik. Um, I'm the executive producer of Generation Impact, and I was recently the head of HP's um, corporate creative and content division, which is where this um, platform was born a couple of years ago. And uh, hi, I'm Sunshine Flynn. I help lead the content and creative team at HP. And my role for this film was really to promote and support it within HP and outside the company. Uh, I'm Marcus Peterzell with Passion Point Collective. And we were already working with Angela on a number of other films and when this idea popped up. So we were lucky enough to be hand in hand at the genesis of Generation Impact, which originally was Generation Genius, till we found out the name was taken. But um, <laughs> we've fallen in love with it since then. And uh, so we've been the agency that's helped produce a number of the films as well as um, um, handling the overall marketing, PR and promotion of the series. Yeah. Hi, my name is Zeta Clark. I'm a producer with Culture House, and we're a Black, Brown, and women-owned premium production company working in film and television. And we worked alongside Passion Point and HP um, from development to delivery on The Scientist, um, and my role was senior producer on the project. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie wong Brayal, and I was the director on the project, and I was hired by everyone here. <laughs> collectively and individually to uh, bring my vision to the whole life story and, and peace. That's amazing. Um, well, it's again, an honor to be here with all of you. Um, always so excited to see what HP is doing actually in the space and, and their real commitment to brand storytelling and how you use incredible partners and, and including Marcus, who I've known for a long time, like forever. <laughs> um, but how you use partners and the stories you choose and, and how inspiring and how much they actually uplift me personally. Um, so this one was actually quite relevant as I have 13 year olds and I'm like, look at this girl, <laughs> go do something meaningful with your lives. <laughs> um, so Angela would love to hear a little bit more just about the origin of, you know, generation impact or generation genius as it may have started and kind of that a little bit about that journey and, and where you are now and, and how it's gone so far. And then also how you went about choosing Culture House actually to help to be your partner with this. Sure. Um, and I'll probably have other people join in and help me with Absolutely. this answer. Um, <clears throat> well, as I think we mentioned in our introductions, we probably started working on this platform, we'll call it Generation impact over two years ago, which I think is just a really uh, important reminder of how long it takes to make good series and good work. They don't come out, they don't get hatched overnight. Um, and so Marcus and I started working on this concept. I think it was still during 2020. Um, we had just finished another film, um, Dear Future Me. And there was a craving um, at HP to do something um, that both was celebrating young people, um, you know, we're so hyper aware of the incredible work that Generation Z has been doing and how 
they're so motivated and really just not sitting around waiting for people to change the world, but doing it themselves. Um, and we wanted to do something that sort of took that uh, energy, combining it with technology to make the world a better place, which is what HP's core mission is, to use technology to make the world a better place. And um, it took us a while to, I think, sort of like find the right partners. Um, Marcus can speak to this a little bit. We wrote a brief, which I actually just reread the other day. It was funny, like um, seeing it. So, you know, and seeing how much it's evolved since then. But uh, we knew we wanted to tell stories about young people, people who, young people who are doing something with technology. Um, and that, you know, and then we were sort of like, well, do we want them to be in the middle of working on their project or have had, uh, have had a success already? And then we knew from the beginning that we wanted to bring in different production companies. So each one of our films, and there's four of them now, is made by a different film company and a different director. And that allowed us to really lean in on diversity and find the best talent um, for this specific story. And Culture House came to us with Emily, with the scientist. Um, and so Marcus, maybe you wanna explain how that worked a little bit. Yes, yeah, so our first film in this series was The Coder. And for The Coder, since it was our, our, there was another one in development at the same time, but the coder was gonna get done pretty quickly. We went to a number of production companies. It was probably about five or six. Angela is exactly right. We created this brief and just said, you know, what, what kind of genius, what kind of magic can you come up with to take? Because we, you know, Generation Impact at that point was still in formation. So we went out to get a lot of ideas and we settled in on, you know, on a production company for the coder. So when it came to the scientist, we, were, we felt we knew more than we did before. So we didn't feel the need to go that wide. So we really, and I just said, I asked my partner, Amy, to remind me, I said, what did we do? We only went to two um, production companies of which obviously Culture House was one of them. We narrowed it down more. We kind of knew what we wanted. Um, so it was about A, who are you as a production company? B, what is your vision? for what this could be and see who would you put forth as the subject. So those were kind of the criteria. So that all happened and then Angela and team and um, we all huddled and, and really felt that Culture House had the right team, the right subject. And um, considering all the awards it's gotten so far, I think we made the right decision. <laughs> I also just want to say too that from the very beginning, so we had all these criteria, which I mentioned, the young person using technology, changing the world. Um, we also, from a strategic brand point of view, which you know, there's always that happening on the other side of the fence, um, is that we wanted to carefully align the film with our core uh, sustainable impact pillars. So, you know, we sort of came out of the gate not knowing exactly the stories we wanted to tell, but knowing what we wanted them to be about. So the first film was um, leaned into this area that uh, HP does a lot of amazing work on, digital equity. And then um, the second film included 3D manufacturing in healthcare. And this film is about, um, in addition to just being about science and an inventor, scientist, it leans into um, climate action and like what we can do right now to try to save our planet and make people aware of what's happening in climate changes, so. Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, Sunshine, maybe you can like shed a little light for us on, you know, obviously going into kind of the, this, this generation of people has so much passion, right, for you know, issues that maybe, you know, even as adults, it's, unless you're living with them, sometimes it's even hard to understand <laughs> um, just kind of the way that they're innately wired. You know, when you guys chose Emily or when Emily kind of came to the table with Culture House, how did you sort of see her fitting into this this narrative series and 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 the role, you know, in terms of she's obviously filling a specific purpose pillar you know, how, how did you see that coming to life? Um, and then how did you work with Culture House as that was sort of developing? Well, Emily, you know, Emily's story is, is, is so powerful. Just, you know, there is a direct human connection that the filmmakers captured so well from her. She didn't approach her project as an abstract problem. You know, it's with a burning need for climate action and that comes across so strongly in everything she says and does. 
So her ambition and clarity of purpose makes her a really compelling subject for anything. Like Angela said, you know, this particular film and all the films in, in Generation Impact, you know, align and support HP's sustainability goals. And this one particularly speaks to, to, to climate action. And, you know, HP is, in addition is committed to youth-led innovation. So we want to focus on that in our storytelling and in our films. But what is really what we also want to focus on or is 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 translate is is make translate that storytelling into action. Mm -hmm. So with the film and with the whole series, we've been able to create an ecosystem of support for this next generation of sustainability and tech innovators. And Emily, for example, was, you know, not just the subject of this film, but she also, you know, HP and we were able to include her with other you know, initiatives and other nonprofits that HP support. So for example, um, as part of the first MIT Solved Youth Innovation Challenge this year, um, which is MIT Solves sort of answer to sort of solving world challenges with technology, and it's partially supported by HP, Emily opened the virtual camp for their 10 finalists, which were girls ages 13 to 18. And they had submitted their ideas for solving an environmental or societal challenge with, by using technology. And so she was able to interact and network with other inspiring girls, um, just like herself. And she was also featured um, as a Shiro by Girl Rising, which is another nonprofit that HP supports. And, and you know, Marcus mentioned JJ. JJ was, was the subject of our first film. She was able to participate in the virtual equality lounge and con. She was chosen by 17 magazine as voice of change. So really the films are, you know, so important for storytelling and for brand values. And they're also a way for HP to use the power of our brand to lift those innovators up and their communities and shine a light on them. Yeah, it's, I mean, it is so incredible. I went to her, the website, you know, her website, and just to see all those young people who have a story to tell about something that they're trying to do to change the world. It's, it is really <laughs> remarkable. Um, Zeta, I think, you know, you, it sounds like you, like you had a little bit of a interesting, it may be a tough job. There are so many um, youth that are using technology that are figuring out ways through their own volition and ambition to change the world. How did you identify Emily as the, as the person that should be featured and, and how does that, and how does that unfold? You know, how do you think about, you know, for brands that might be interested in, in doing this type of storytelling, you know, some of this process can feel a little opaque and, and don't, they don't really understand how to access it. You know, how, how did you go about finding Emily and, and, and helping kind of tell that story and working with Stephanie, you know, to, to do that. How did you guys go about that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, for us, it just really starts with character driven storytelling and that, that starts in casting. So while sometimes we'll use casting support, like outside casting support, majority of our projects, the producers cast themselves. So yes, it was like two, a month or a half of me just talking to 17 and 18 year old geniuses on zoom calls <laughs> And being like, wait, can you just explain that like in layman's terms one more time, please? Um, but I think that that approach really works for us because it immediately builds trust. And then it also lets the casting process be like an explorative phase. So although we know what we're generally looking for, when you talk to teenagers and when you talk to kids, you actually see what's going on in their lives. You see what the problems are that um, they're trying to fix. And then that helps define the project. And so we kind of narrowed it down to a few different folks and that's based on, you know, how well um, someone tells their story, what's going on in their lives right now, what we could potentially film. Um, and then from there, we, yeah, honed in on Emily's story and then built kind of a story treatment, which just ensures that we can tell a fully arced um, film. So that was kind of the, the casting um, process on our end. And then what I really loved about working on this specific project is that like Marcus started this off with being like, we're filmmakers and we love filmmakers. And that was just really obvious um, throughout it. Uh, I think that that trust and collaboration is so essential. And, you know, in this field, like you're telling someone's story and that is so precious, you know? And so you have to, as a group between the agency, the brand and the filmmakers, have a trust and, and shared vision um, so that your hero 
knows that you're going to be able to tell their story um, in, in a positive way, in a way that, that respects them. So I think that that was also something that was very um, core to developing this project. And then what was your last question? Well, I, th I think you, I think, you know, and so I would actually almost say then to step yeah. in, right? Like, so, you know, you're coming into this and I don't know, have you, have you, if you all have worked together in the past, but you know, you're, you're coming in and, and, and what was it like for you to realize then you're, you know, you really have this story arc, you have this narrative, you have this amazing character who you're looking to develop, you know, not only her, but kind of the other kind of folks in, in her realm, like I think that was her brother, uh, maybe who is also in, in, in the film. And, you know, so what is it, what is it like for you? And, and, and how does that role and relationship sort of start to start to move forward, right? Now you have the story arc, now you have the treatment, now you have all the things, and now you're going to tell Emily's story. How does that work? So, um, you know, I mean, one thing about Emily that was so great is that she, with my first interview with her, because even though there's all these pieces in place, I still need to get to know her and figure out, you know, how can I visually bring to life her work? And so in that first meeting, there are many times where, like Zeta said, I'm like, okay, explain this to me again, like I'm a kindergartner. <laughs> what does that mean? How does that work? And so as she went through that process, I started to visually understand how she did her scientific work. And I was like, you know, if there's a way that we can magnify that and bring people into that. I think that that's because how do you represent a Tory pine needle and what it does? You know, oh, I mean, like, so abstract and scientific and she like showed me all the data points and I was like oh, okay that's wonderful but that's boring so um once she started showing me these slides of the work that she does I was like oh okay now I see how we can help people understand what actually she's creating what the research really is doing what does that look like in a tangible form that people can understand um and so once once we clicked those two pieces, this, the like content with the visuals, it was just like a lot of fun. I gave Zeta a lot of fun ideas and tasks and pro big projectors to get <laughs> so that we could make sure that um, her, we could magnify her work and make it feel larger than life because that is what she's doing right now. So um, it was a really great opportunity to figure out a way in that could, um, bring to life the magic that she's doing. Yeah, I mean, you did, you made it so accessible. Like I remember the very first part, I'm like, Tory. I mean, I obviously know Tory Pines in Los Angeles, right? Very familiar with Tory Pines in San Diego, but I was like, how did they do, what? And then you, the, the way you told that story and sort of took us through that and what was happening in her garage and, and, you know, all the way out into actually being in the environment and her taking, collecting the water. And it was just a really, I mean, it was incredibly done. Um, but as we also know, like great stories are made often, and then they have to get out there into the, into the wild for people to engage with. So Marcus, you know, we've obviously done so much of this, um, Passion Point Collective has been so instrumental in, in supporting brands as, as you're, as they're looking to bring those stories and films to life. Um, maybe you can tell, cause I think that's also part where, you know, in terms of brands trying to make a business case for how, why and how they should go to market with these types of initiatives and projects. Um, it would be great to hear from you a little bit about how you approach this and, and some of the, and some of the accolades and, and, and wonderful um, accommodate, you know, accommodations that uh, this, that this piece received. Well, you know, the, the key to everything is you've got to be aligned with the client. And Angela and our team were violently in agreement from day one that we were making movies. And these had to be treated as movies and content and not branded entertainment. And, you know, we spend much of our time explaining to people the difference is people are still like, oh, you little dancing computers. And it's, no, <laughs> that's not what these films are, but that's what people are used to. So from day one, Angela was very clear um, about you know her vision and and our desire to make sure these were treated as lean forward content as any great documentary would be and people were engaged in the content and fell in love with the characters um and that was our number one goal and then the brand goes along in that the you know the brand halo so 
from every aspect. What's important is it's hard to do that if you're given a film and it's already baked and it doesn't follow those guidelines. Now you're kind of force fitting it into the traditional movie marketing system. But in the case with, all, with most of these films, um, with HP, we made sure from day one finding a production company that has films in Hollywood, Culture House, finding a director who won awards um, for documentaries, Stephanie. So from day one, it had to be the right team and the right people. And then that followed through into the dozens of film festivals that this film has gotten into and won. Um, going onto the VOD platforms, um, getting the kind of press um, from, you know, whether it's from Hearst to the Weather Channel to Fox to, you know, it just all had a follow. So the strategy has to be agreed upon day one and dive your plan and plan your dive. So um, luckily, again, everyone was in violent agreement to do this. So we were able to move this down the field and accomplish that because everyone had the same vision to treat this as a great film as number one. And then all the other aspects, including the brand Halo and the brand mission fell in line under that. But by having that mission clearly stayed them just at up front, that was kind of our holy grail. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's, I mean, it, congratulations, because obviously like that's tremendous uh, success. Um, I, the next, I guess, you know, I'll sort of round this out in the the usual expected cadence, which I would I would ask Angela or Sunshine maybe to weigh in. So, you know, in terms of your overall, because again, this is for other brands that are watching this that might be interested in in kind of embarking on on this kind of um, adventure <laughs> within their own organizations. Um, what you know, in terms of of how this sits as part of your integrated marketing ecosystem. You know, how do you how do you have those conversations internally? How do you feed back the measurement and the accountability of the of the dollars that you're spending to do this? I mean, obviously, the inspiration and aspiration speaks for itself and it lands itself to your own brand purpose and your pillars. Um, but, you know, I think for a lot of brands, it's really important to be able to understand how to have those conversations. So would love to hear from either of you um, or both of you about both of us. thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think um, the first thing that we had that was such a blessing is that we had a leader who really believed in storytelling. So it's so wonderful to hear Marcus, you know, nodding towards me. And then I had a wonderful leader, Karen Khan, who helped bring everything to life and clear the runway for us. Um, so that's super important. And not everybody has that. And I totally understand. Um, I always tell other brand people, um, and I know Sunshine can help with this paint this picture too, is that you can't just think about the film um, and what it's doing as pushing out to external audiences. We get this amazing halo, we have media, we have public, you know, earned media, paid media, social media, it's all fantastic. But the brands really need to look at these films as assets that grow over time. So, and I think there, you know, I think that it's easy to justify the investment when you can really see how wonderfully these assets get used, whether it's, especially when, when everybody's working from home and we're having like Zoom meetings, you can use it for employee meetings. Your CEO can have a clip when he's talking at a keynote speech somewhere. Um, we've used it for panels at the South by Southwest Film Festival. Um, so lots of times the content that we've been able to make almost like solves a problem or sol fills in a place where there would be a void without it. Um, and we can sort of not only deliver an amazing story, but then these incredible people and talents that are attached to it. Uh, and it's just, I just think it's its a wonderful investment, but you have to be able to connect all those dots. Don't you think, Sunshine? <laughs> yeah. And that kind of, you know, the, you know, there's been very creative ways that, um, you know, we promoted this whole series from 17 social campaign and the native units on the New York Times homepage. And it's gotten incredible visibility throughout and that's really gratifying. You know, right now, I think the entire series has garnered over 1 million YouTube videos. And that's really important um, for that kind of reach. But also, you know, in addition, the goals that we talked about are, you know, important to HP's leadership. So like Angela said, you know, this film or these films are something that they can be proud of that also all of the employees can be proud of, you know? And so it's not just the leadership or the top of the organization, although of course they can 
use it for all those sort of solving those problems like Angela said, or promoting it or putting it on their LinkedIn. Um, but also all of the employees, it's a great, this type of content is something to be proud of. And it's something to be that the place you work for is supporting this type of work, supporting these people. And that's a really tangible, um, you know, sort of point that you can just say, hey, like we do this, I'm proud of it. And I work for the company that makes it. Yeah, I mean, it is. And especially now we know, right? 56% of uh, Gen Z believe that their companies need to stand for yeah. diversity, inclusion and, and sustainability. So it is probably more even even more important than ever before. And you you got that memo before others did. So <laughs> congratulations, because um, it is really important. So um, I think we have covered some wonderful territory here. And uh really appreciate all of your time and your insights and your wisdom. Um, I think it's going to be hugely valuable, certainly very interesting and, and valuable for me. So I appreciate the time. Um, and I think I wish we wish everyone a wonderful Sundance and a wonderful holiday season and a wonder, wonderful winter. Um, and thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Nice thank seeing you, you all. Everyone. Thanks, Jordan. Well, Thanks, Drew. Thanks. Jordan. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.